obviously we're not going to see the 21 till tomorrow so can you give us an idea of how different the site might look on Sunday? Yeah there's a couple of um, changes but more enforced more than anything else obviously once you're starting to get a little bit of rhythm you want to try and keep a little bit of consistency but we've had a couple of things that have just kind of slightly um, set us back a little bit in terms of naming the same team so it'll be majority of it will be the similar team but it what's it there will be a couple of tweaks in there anything that gives you cause for concern oh no not not long term just just for a week um, probably a weekly issue more so than anything else given the fact and I'm not saying you could you can take London lightly at all but given the fact that they haven't won a game so far have you ever considered sort of a greater rotation for this week at all no not no not at all um, I think we played Hull last year when they'd lost seven on the bounce haven't they um, and then we went there and we, we were performing pretty well until that game and then we went there kind of half cocked and didn't do our job so that's kind of a little bit of a warning for us this week to make sure that we're doing everything right so yeah I've not thought about tweaking the team it was kind of trying to build our consistency trying to build our processes and the continuity between each other as individuals more so than anything else you did tweak the spine last week didn't you with two at yeah. six can you give us an idea of the sort of dialogue you've now had going forward with with Ollie Russell yeah it's just um, the big one is obviously they know um, Ollie Russell performed really well at the start of the year um, a lot of the pre-season training we'd probably done with um, Tui, um, Clooney and um, Jake Connor in the spine but it was all going to be coming down to performances and I thought um, Ollie Russell started the season pretty well and that's why Tui unluckily for him got suspended um, he'd worked really hard all pre-season to get back in condition to be ready to perform but a suspension kind of hurt him and then Ollie Russell held his spot from there and then we felt against Hull KR we were slightly off in some of the things that we, we wanted from our spine so we thought Tui would be the better option last week um, so we'll just discuss that in and around um, Rusty and what we want for him but Rusty signed a contract for, for Huddersfield he's a real professional kid a professional player and He's got to kind of wait his time now. Um, he's an important part of our squad. I'm not just going to say he's just a part of our squad. He's an important part of our squad and he'll, he'll play a really important role throughout the rest of this season, I should imagine. And a couple of weeks ago when we spoke to Robbo, he was told us of some good news regarding Andre Cervelio. Um, are there any further updates on his progress? Yeah, he's moving forward. Um, we're, we're, it's just kind of really s slowly but surely with um, Dre. So yeah, he's making good progress, mate. And hopefully we can start see, well he can definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel now so it's about getting him in the right condition he's just starting to he's getting close now to being able to join in um full training if you like so that'll probably be in about a week or two and then we'll go from there with him but it's a positive that he's back he's up on his feet he's doing the right things he's training he's getting himself back in condition um waiting for his opportunity to come and this is your rivals round fixture at london isn't it is there a specific rivalry? <laughs> London that I don't know about. Yeah, I don't know about it either, to be honest with you. It's a bit of a strange one, um, but it, it is what it is, isn't it? It's, listen, for us, I know it's a rivals round and everyone wants to build it up, but um, London and Huddersfield are pretty far in distance apart from each other, aren't they? So, yeah, um, we just need to focus on doing our job. It's not the biggest grudge match I've ever <laughs> yeah. heard in rugby league. No. Um, uh, is it a test of of attitude as, as, as much as, as aptitude this week though? Well, I think every week is. I think every week um, comes down to your attitude and the way that you're going to approach the game. You want everybody to be 100% in every week, ready, prepared the right way, taking every game seriously because there's no easy games in Super League. I mean, you look at London's performances against Catalan, against Wigan, over in London, They've, they've stepped up really well, even Hull away. They should have really got probably got the win there. Um, they've performed in some of the games that I've seen where they've had quite a lot of changes. If you look at the Warrington Cup game, I thought they did really well for large parts in that game. And they had a hell of a lot of changes in there. The one thing we'll know is they'll come with enthusiasm um, and they'll be ready to kind of play and compete. And they do test you. Um, their attack's very good. They like to throw the ball about. They like to kind of push, push it if you like and flick it out of the back pocket. So we've got to be on our on our game to make sure that we defend really well else they will score points which is what you've seen in some of the other games against like Wigan and Hull FC so they can be dangerous it's about us making sure that we focus on what we're about and getting better week in and week out and you've got the travel as well to, to contend with also which sometimes sort of affects players mindsets doesn't it yeah it can do I think we're alright we're going down the day before so 
Um, we're doing everything right that we need to do. Like I say I've been down to London. We've travelled on the day before when I've been at some um, at other clubs, and we've gone down there and pre prepared and performed really, really well. So I think now with the professional players, they know what it takes to kind of be travelling around a little bit, especially since COVID days. Like when you were flying into Catalan on the day and coming straight back home on the day, they know what it's about now and they understand how they need to prepare for that. Talking of which. Can I just get your thoughts on your Challenge Cup course final draw? Yeah, a great draw for us, I think. Yeah, a great draw. Um, it's never going to be an easy game, is there, in the kind of quarterfinals? So, yeah, Catalan, Catalan away. You, you would have probably preferred it to be at home, but it's away. I think it's a great draw for us. And just with Easter, is it is it a bonus that we're not talking about this being the first game of in the three and six and four <laughs> and ten and etc. Yeah, definitely, definitely for these guys, for the players as well. To what was always happening, being able to back up two, three days after you just played before, it's a big ask. You see some of the bodies, especially some of the older players, the young guys like Harry probably had handled it no problem, but some of the older guys, it'd probably catch them up and they probably won't be able to walk on Monday, uh, let alone go out and play a game because the game's gone that kind of quick and that physical. You, you can't do what we kind of used to do if you like. The game was obviously a little bit slower there and not everybody was a kind of finely tuned athlete like they are today. So Harry, how does it feel? to be back yeah it feels great um, it's been a long time coming really uh, I started started training um, pretty much right at the start of the year just after the Malaga camp uh, and ever, ever since then I've been itching, itching to get back playing um, but still working hard I've worked hard for the past eight months ever since I got injured and I've just got to keep doing that every week to keep my spot in the team um, and then performing on a game day now it's still getting back used to sort of the game day routine and stuff like that I've not played in such a while but um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to just, just keep improving every week and I'm, I'm still young, I'm still learning. And it has been a long road back, hasn't it? And I'm sure as mentally challenging as, as anything else. What, what's kept what's kept you going? What's kept you positive through that, that long journey? Uh, I'm not sure really. It's probably just my, my love for the game. Um, I think you, you forget when you're playing that, like how lucky you are really to have this kind of job. Um, and then when you can take a step back and you... you, you, you You've got no no choice but to not play every week, um, especially at the back end of last year when when the lads were doing it tough. Um, sort of just being positive and knowing that if I work hard for the next eight months, I can come back and make a positive difference. And how have the lungs been? And how's the knee been over the last couple of games? Yeah, the knee's been completely fine. Um, I was a bit worried at first. Um, I've 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 had quite a quick return, um, but yeah, the knee's held up fine and. I've worked hard over, like I said, I've worked hard over the past eight months. My my, my lungs, I didn't, I had no doubt that there'd never be a problem. Brilliant. So if if you if you needed to start, you're more than happy to do that. Yeah, what could play me 80 minutes and I'd, I'd do it. Um, yeah, I, whatever whatever the team needs, I'll, I'll do it. Um, yeah, if if the team needs me to play 20 and players a players a sort of prop role, I can do that. If I need to play as a 13, I can do that as well. But yeah, um, lungs wise, yeah, I could play 80 tomorrow, day after and day after that. And do you feel like you're, you're going to be making up for lost time a little bit this, this season, given the fact that you've been out for, for that long? Uh, not necessarily, I'm still young. Uh, I think if I was at the back end of my career, I I'm, I'm, might be doing so, but with being young, it's it's good. And with having Leroy sort of playing that 13 role, it's good for me to learn from him. Um, so yeah, like I say, I've got an, hopefully another 10, 15 years in my career. So I've, I've just, like I say, got to keep learning and uh, keep improving and hopefully, I'll uh, I'll keep getting better and better. I bet you you'll hope to be playing as well as Leroy is when you get to his <laughs> age. What can you say about the the, the way he's held that position down? Oh, I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, won't be surprised if I was dead by his age. Never mind, <laughs> never mind <laughs> playing like that. He's playing nearly <laughs> a full game. Um, yeah, playing nearly a full game at that age is in the middle is is incredible, really. Especially when your body's not really been battle hard and. To that sort of middle position for his full career, it's 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 like he's like he's 21, and I've said it before, he's invaluable to the team, and he's a great leader, and for everyone else, I think it's just he's just a great role model. Sort of what watching that, and um, especially for me playing his position, like I say, I can just keep learning from him. And what's your take on London? Uh, it's just just like for me personally, it's just like any, any other game, and I'm sure it is for any other, all the other lads. Um, like what I said, they'll come out firing, and it's just about us staying on our game. Um, we've we've been nilled this year, and we've scored 50. So 
we've kind of kind of had it both ways, and we've just like I say, got to stick to our game, and um, I'm I'm sure we'll come away with a win if we do that. Good luck. I'll see you both down there. Thank <laughs> you. I am travelling down on the day. So. All right. <laughs> All right. Are you on the train or car? I'm driving down. All oh, right, nice. Yeah, so not having the luxury of coming down the day before. <laughs> um, good luck, and I will see you down there. I'll pass you off to everyone else. Cheers, JD. Thank you. Hello, what's up? It's Gary. All right. Hi, right, guys. You okay, mate? Yeah, good. Thank you. For, forgive me if I've missed it, but is Spencer Rogers about you? Yes, he is. He's, he'll be named in our squad, mate. I suppose you'll have sort of inside knowledge of what Lumbia are about and where the, where the strengths lie and things like that. Have you almost like been tapping into that maybe? Oh, I've asked him a couple of questions, mate, but generally it's more about us, this one. Um, that's what we've been focusing on the last couple of weeks, since the old KR one, just kind of focusing on us and making sure we're improving because we felt like we were going in the right direction. The old KR, we just kind of came off slightly from wh where we needed to be, so it was just about getting back on doing our processes right and making sure that we build them to the back end of the year. So, yeah, I've, I've asked him a couple of things, but they've generally been on the run while we've been out in training when you've kind of remembered something off video and you've just said, oh, what, what what's the point of that? What, what they're looking at there? And then he's been able to... He's pretty switched on Fenton for a front rower, to be fair. So, he's given us a... Like I say, he's answered the questions that we've asked him. Have you noticed that, honestly, like, like the benefit of that? Short, long spell, and he's had that experience off super. You, you're sort of noticing that in training, maybe. Yeah, you're noticing his character as well. He, I think he's got a better picture and a better understanding of where he's at now. Um, the big thing was his development and how he develops. So, like last year, the year playing in the championship was a really important move for Fenton. We'd done the League One the year before then the championship last year so he's he's clocking up games once you get to like about 50 games between 50 and then once you get to 100 games you understand what it's all about you understand what your performances are like and what your strengths are and so do other teams as well so he's he's going through a really good learning environment at the moment Fenton but I think he now understands what Super League's about by going to London and doing it tough in some of the games. Um, you think about the, the Wigan game and the Warrington game where they were defending the goal line for the first 30 minutes. That That's a tough period in the game that you've got to be willing to get through that. And I think Fenton handled himself pretty well in them areas is that his mindset was a tough mentality that if he had to do that and he had to do that for 80 minutes, he would do that and he'd keep turning up for his team as well. So he'll have learned a hell of a lot from that. And it's about going forward now of where we can get him, um, will he continue to push into our first team squad or will we need to send him back out on loan somewhere to keep him playing at the moment and keep him developing and learn what from what he's just experienced? Just one last one for you. You're not hearing like weird sort of like arguments between Fenton and the league, you hear you say, because we're both assistant coaches, <laughs> saddled with that. You're not hearing like one disagreeing with the other about how things are done there, are you? Oh, no, I don't think so. I think if Fenton still knows he's, he's just underneath him. Um, Yates is like his dad, I think, um, for him at the moment. So he's all right. He likes to have a little bit of an argument now and again, Fenny, and try and tell you. He's pretty direct, as his uh, dad was when he used to play as well. So, yeah, no, I think they have good banter between them, the two Saddleworth boys there. Harry, uh, you, you talked a bit about, before about your, your road to recovery. Have you, have you almost had approaching games with a new mindset because of what you learned through that time now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, um, but a bit more grateful for the sort of job I've got. Um, but as well, the first half of last year sort of stood me in good stead. Um, I think I had a similar sort of thing at Wigan and Canberra. It sort of takes me time to kind of find my feet and get confidence in, in my playing playing ability. Um, last year I was I was trying trying to do my job as best I could, but I don't think I had that sort of confidence to to do what I could, um, especially ball playing wise and. With having, with having some time off and being able to watch all the games, um, obviously I couldn't do, really do much at the start of my recovery, so I was just watching all the NRL games, all the Super League games, and um, learning. And yeah, I, I go into I go into games now knowing that I've got more confidence, but I am still learning. You, you, you mentioned Canberra. Your time at Canberra must have been there, especially with because of the whole COVID thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, and I went over young and. You, I don't think you realise how much competition there is over there. All the young lads that you've never even heard of, are, they're all great. And um, like I say, it's just a lot, lot, lot bigger pool of sort of players over there, so they've got a lot more to pick from. Um, but yeah, that's that gave me confidence um, coming back here. And like I said, like I keep saying, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still young, um, and I've still got to fight my way into the team every week. Can I ask you about Ireland as well? 
as well because he played for them in the last World Cup. But obviously, that that role now seems to have been cut off by the decision to obviously like relegate Ireland to affiliate members. As a player, you almost feel like that's an opportunity you've been denied for something that's not your fault, maybe. Yeah, definitely. It is disappointing. Um, I think it's to do with the sort of domestic um, competition over there. Um, it's disappointing for a lot of lads because I know people might say that a lot of lads weren't actually Irish born, but they're pretty passionate, um, especially with it being such close family uh, that are Irish. And I think we've actually got, first team wise, we've got, we've got a good squad there that we can sort of compete with, with, with the good teams. But yeah, it is disappointing, but there's nothing we can do about it now. And um, hopefully the lads keep the passion and st still play, even though we can't get in a World Cup. Just confirm to what your Irish connection is. Is it your mum and dad that are Irish or grandparents or? Uh, my mum's mum was Irish, yeah. Um, so that, that's, my, that's my connection there, yeah. No, that's brilliant. Cheers, mate. I'll pass you over. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers, guys. <coughs> Uh, also, just, just one from me. Just on your attack, when you get it right, you're able to score 50. But is there a sense of frustration that you can't get it right all the time? I think most teams are like that, to be honest with you, Lewis. Um, everyone's trying to chase the kind of perfect game, aren't they, in perfect scenarios all the time. The one thing we can keep doing is keep improving, keep learning and keep getting better. Some of the combinations um, for us as a team is we're still quite new. If you think about kind of... Obviously, Jake only joined us through the season last year. I know he was here all through pre-season, but he didn't actually train all pre-season um, the year before last. This year, he's had a few games at the back end of the year. He's done the pre-season this year, but he's trying to find his feet with Adam Clune, who's new. Obviously, Tui being in the house, because if you think last year was a lot of the times, either Jake was full-back or Tui was full-back. We had them kind of in and out, and then like Oliver Russell was the half-back. So the spine's slightly different, um, kind of from, in terms of a continuity style in that they've not had the time together as you'd expect. If you look at, say, say look at St. Helens or, um, I don't know, you look at kind of Wigan's spine, they have time together, they've been together for a long period of time, so you think what they do do is pretty crisp. What I would say as a positive for ours is, when we have got it right, it's looked pretty crisp and it's fired pretty well, but then again, on another occasion, it's misfired. Um, but listen, you, you're going to get that in the season like you are in terms of performances. You're going to get ups and downs, but it's about kind of levelling them off so you have the minimum kind of downs as, and you have more of the ups, to be fair. So, yeah, no, it's going in the right direction and it's getting better all the time. But the continuity helps. Um, people like Harry coming back in. Um, like Harry's not really had a pre-season in terms of ball playing in the middle of the field. He'll learn that through the season and people will learn what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are in terms of the timing off him and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress, but quite a lot of teams will tell you probably their, their attacks are always a work in progress, especially early in the year anyway. Um, they, they can always be a little bit clunky, if you like. Yeah, brilliant. That's it from me. Best of luck this week. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I know it's Richard at the YP here. I know it's probably hard how he sat next to you, but how good is it to have him back on the field? Yeah, huge. He's, he's a big one for us. Uh, Harry knows kind of my affection um, towards him as an individual and as a player. Not just Harry brings um, more to the team and more to the club than just what he does on the field as well. And that's the one thing I can say. He spoke about coming back from his injury. Um, it's his professionalism in the way he does things and the way he carries himself, which I'm pretty certain he'll have a very, very high-end top career, um, Will Harry. It's just about getting him out there. Like I say, he's still learning and it's helping him learn and helping him develop, similar to what we spoke about Fenton, probably just Harry's a little bit further on in terms of his development than where kind of Fenton, Fenton is at this moment in time. But yeah, we expect him to have a really high-end career 